everybody again. Amen. Glad y'all made it here. Uh, if y'all please grab your Bibles and turn to Philippians chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 27 through 30. And then we'll get started. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you so much for allowing us to get here safely again tonight. Lord, we're thankful for the fact that we can come to a church house and worship freely. And Lord, we know that the building is not the church, but we ourselves as one body, as one people in Christ are the church. Lord, I pray that you help me here tonight. Lord, help me to say what you'd have me say. And Lord, help me to keep myself out of this preaching, Lord, but use me in a mighty way, Lord. I pray you cleanse me of sin, empty me of myself, and fill me with your spirit that I may preach this and preach it right. Lord, I love you, and I thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I got one word to focus on tonight. I entitled it just the word together. And you know, uh, for years now, brother, Ed, this whole country has been divided and, and, and we, we can't agree with anybody. We can't even agree with our closest neighbors on the, on the smallest little thing. And used to, I've heard stories, I, I don't know that I've seen it myself, but used to you could disagree and still get along, Brother Ed. You, you know, y'all know what I'm saying? You could have friends and not necessarily agree on every little aspect of it. We, um, I mean, yeah, politics especially, I'm not going to get into that because I don't know what I'm talking about. But I do know that there are things that we ought to do together. We are a Christian people, right? We all have, well, I, I won't say we all have. We are the Wednesday night crowd of church. I'll say the vast majority of us have received Christ as our Savior. We, ha we have accepted the Lord and the fact that he is our Savior. We believe that he came and lived a perfect life and he was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And God sent him here for the sole purpose of redeeming his people. So we look at Philippians chapter 27, or chapter 27, ver, chapter 1, verse 27. My first point is only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind. And here's the first point, striving together for the faith of the gospel. To strive is to make great efforts to achieve or obtain something. So as Christians, we have one goal. To spread the gospel. Yep. That sound right, Brother John? I know you like to go to the jail and you love to, sp you love to talk to those men that have been incarcerated. You, lo you love to tell them about Jesus. I remember those stories you've told me about just... Uh, the one story you told me, Brother John, where you went back and you didn't come back out for several hours. They just forgot you was back there. And you was just having a good time with those men. You were spreading the gospel. And that's our whole goal. That's my goal here tonight. I'm supposed to preach with power and unction, but I'm supposed to preach the truth whether you like it or not or whether I like it or not. It's my whole goal. And on Sunday mornings, I have the bus ministry. I go and pick up those kids that who's... who's Potentially only opportunity to hear the gospel is, comes from this church, comes from my efforts going out on Saturdays and picking them up on Sundays. And we have Brother Keith that drives the bus and we have Brother Eddie who helps and, and really is an encouragement to me. And we have Brother Ed who started the, the bus ministry at this church. And what, would, what did you call it, Brother Ed? The, the Burgundy Beast. He's like, how many kids did you pick up in that thing? Several kids in the, this big old Burgundy Beast. I don't know. It was probably not legal the way he was doing. No, but he went out and he was picking up children for the, for the gospel. He was bringing them to church to get Jesus to them, to show them Jesus, to show the love that Jesus gives. He was showing Christ in his life to those children. But Brother Bobby Robertson, he, he was striving to these two, Brother Ed and Brother Bobby Robertson, they strove together to give us a bus, to start a bus ministry. We have all these different things. We are striving together for the purpose of Spreading the gospel. So let me ask you, what are you striving for? We all have our own goals. 
We all have our personal lives. We, we all have lives outside of this building. We all have things we do. We have jobs. We have families. We have different things that we need to attend to. But what are you striving for? Some people strive for worldly gain. That's wealth, pros, I mean, wealth and prosperity, same thing. Fame. They're, they're striving for things that come and go because people are fickle. The economy is fickle. Fame comes and goes because they're going to nitpick you no matter what you do. So are you striving for worldly gain, or worldly glory? Or you don't even necessarily have to do those things. You have to, maybe you're just striving for yourself. You're trying your best to better your, your lot in life. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, brother? You can, you can strive for a better car. You can strive for uh, wanting a better house. You can strive for a better job. You can strive for a, a, a raise. You can strive for all these different things to better yourself. But if that's the only purpose for it, it's vain and sinful. So all of these lead to spiritual emptiness. Now, our goal for striving together is the furtherance of the gospel. We have the, uh, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. I can't, I, I did memorize it after a while ago, but the Great Commission. Um, Go ye therefore and preach and baptize all, all of them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. And you, you know, we're supposed to go out and preach and teach, baptize all of them. Anyway, so... Striving together. And if we're going to strive together, we have to do it. Watch this. Where is it at? Here it is. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit. One spirit. In the book of Acts, it says that they were uh, all together with one accord. They all had one mind. They all had one purpose, one goal. They weren't trying to gain popularity. They weren't trying to do any of those things that the world would normally try and do, but we are as a whole, as a body of Christ, as a church, we are striving together in one spirit. Or at least we should be. Anyway, 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 moving on, moving on. Not only are we <clears throat> striving together, but we're serving together. The Christian life is a life of service. Not, we're not, uh, what is it, Philippians 1, 8? Nope, it's in Philippians. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Chapter 2. Two, three, and four, I think is what I was trying to get at. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. We are serving together. As a church, we, we come to this building. We have different opportunities to do things. I have the bus ministry. Brother, uh, Brother John, you have the jail ministry. As soon as it opens back up, I'm sure you're going to tear those doors open just to get to them. We have, um, we have Brother Jesse as the pastor. He's over all of the ministries. We have all these different ministries. Those are different places to serve together. Not all, but those are, uh, um, you know, the, the big ones. But we also have the, the cleaning that's, that's a ministry. We have the, uh, as soon as it warms up, as soon as springtime comes around, we have um, mowing the lawn and taking care of the different things. We have the maintenance of the church. We have all these different ministries and we can serve together. But uh, <clears throat> the Christian life is one of service. That's the whole point there. When we start seeking for our own glory, when we start seeking for our, our own all right, those people come to church nowadays. They come looking for something that what the church can do for their family. Do, do they have a children's church? Um, are they going to help me if I'm financially needy? Are, they're they're seeking something, but as a church family, as as people that are active and and always coming to when the doors are open, we're servants together. Even if we don't necessarily work in the same ministry, we are still. Servants of Christ and therefore servants 
of one another and servants together. All right. But notice this service is not an easy thing. Service is, is hard. Service is a, fac- a, a sacrifice, but more than that, it is a privilege. Because we know where we came from. At the very least, I know where I came from. Brother, brother, uh, brother Ed on Sunday gave a little, we had a little praise thing Sunday night. We, uh, and I, I, I spoke about where I had come from and what God had delivered me from. And I know that what I was before makes me feel unqualified, and I am. But God can still use somebody like me. It's a privilege. But we're not to serve selectively. We're supposed to serve everybody. We go to those people that don't want us around, and we serve them in love. Um, I heard David Gibbs tell a story about his son when he was in college. Uh, His whole ministry while he was in college, he would go to different truck stops. And, you know, truckers can be rough people, you know. Their language isn't the nicest and most eloquent. They maybe aren't the cleanest people. Some of them. But his whole ministry was to go to those people that nobody else would go to. And he would love them and serve them and do everything he could because he was a servant of Christ. And because he was a servant of Christ, he was a servant of people. All right, so we have striving together and serving together. And lastly, we have suffering together. In the Christian life, not one of ease primarily, but one of earthly suffering. Because remember, this world isn't our home. <laughs> this isn't our final destination. We're here, we do what Christ has bidden us to do, and then we go home. But while we're here on this earth, we know Jesus himself told me or told us in his word that we would be persecuted, that we would be hated because they hated him first. I have a whole bunch of notes here that I'm not going to get to, but that's fine. As a church, we'll be persecuted. We can see it in individuals people railing against the church as individuals, but also we see it coming as a, as a country. We're not being persecuted just yet, I don't think. But it's coming. And because it's coming, we ought to be ready for the suffering that comes with that persecution. So, we suffer together. We might, when we're at home, when we're by ourselves, we might think that we're suffering alone. But first off, we have Jesus who sticketh closer than a brother. We have our church family. If we allow each other to bear our burdens, if we, allow, if we help our, our brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ, if we bear their burdens, we help them. And because we love them and we know them intimately, we, we see them on a weekly basis. We spend time with them. We suffer because they suffer. And because they suffer, we pray for them. And we, and we love on them. And they suffer with us. Brother Ed, I don't know what it's like to be a pastor. I don't. But you have, uh, Pastor, how long? 40 years. A long time. You've had moments of suffering. You've had people that you could go to and they would bear your burdens. And they'd suffer with you and they'd pray for you. That's what we do. We suffer together as a family of God. But if we're going to do all those things, if we're going to strive together, if we are going to serve together, if we're going to suffer together, we've got to get to a place where our whole focus is on God. I was reading A.W. Tozer just the other day, 
and he quoted somebody that said, God is a jealous lover. So, God won't suffer another in his place. So it's either him, him, it's either the Lord on the, on the, on the pedestal of your heart, or it's yourself, or it's money, or it's some other thing. It could be whatever the case may be. We have to get to a place where God's glory is our whole purpose, where we come to church and we're here to worship him, and we go to work and we're there to exemplify what Christ is like because God, or Jesus Christ himself, came to be our example. So we know how to suffer because he suffered first. He showed us how to live. He showed us how to love people. Anytime he looked on a great multitude of people, right before he'd go preaching, the Bible says in Matthew, in, in one of those chapters in Matthew, he says that he looked, he saw the multitudes and he had compassion on them. His goals are our goals, but we've got to love him more than we love ourselves. We've got to love him more than we love money. We've got to love him more than we love our families. And John the Baptist said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Our whole goal here is to learn to give up the self and forsake it for Christ. And in Christ, we have all things. And then once we get to that place and we understand that the word is right here, I mean, it's basic. We, the, the closer, the more we read our Bible, the more we study our Bible, the more we pray, the more we spend time with those people that love the Lord, the closer we can feel the Lord. We just got to get back to basics. In our togetherness, if we're going to strive for unity, if we're going to become one as a body of Christ, if we're going to love each other and love people and love sinners and, and, and turn our cheek when somebody smites us, and if we're going to uh, go with people twain, like in, it says in the Sermon of the Mount, if we're going to do all those things, we've got to love Christ and his purpose and his goal more than we love ourselves and more than we love anything on this earth. And then we can do it together. If only we'll get our eyes on the Lord.